Thanks so much for joining us today. And we're extremely excited to have Brad Blanton with us. Brad's a psychotherapist who's worked with thousands of individuals and families. And we came to know Brad through reading his book, Radical Parenting and also Radical Honesty. As mothers and mentors of mothers, we greatly appreciate Brad taking the time to answer our questions about his revolutionary ideas on parenting and relationships. Good. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Brad. You've been raising children for like every, one every decade, for, like, for every decade since the 1950s. Yes. <laughs> You've got five children. Um, so why write a book about radical parenting? Tell us a bit about your life and why, uh, and why radical honesty as well. Well, I've had five successful marriages. <laughs> and uh, my, the longest was like 22 years and the shortest was about five and a half years. And, uh, and I had a total of six children and basically they all know each other and related to each other and re we're all related. And I say I've had successful marriages because their mothers and I completed our marriage and got divorced and separated, but we forgave each other in the process. And we still co-parented and we still valued each other's co-parenting when we did it. So that's why I say I've had five successful marriages. They varied in terms of degrees of success. <laughs> but my, I've got kids I'm really proud of and they are really loving and wonderful. And I've got four grandkids and they're, they're being loved into being. Yeah. And basically, uh, I think it works pretty good most of the time, what I do. Mm, awesome. So, so I've always... Your life, like, like what led up to the writing of the books? Well, uh, I had a really great early childhood. My father worked for the telephone company and my mother and I had an older sister who was like nine when I was born. And then I had a younger brother born after me and we were a very happy family. We lived out in the country. And then all of a sudden my father who, when I was five and a half, my father died of a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And um, it was really hard and my mother had a hard time with it. And she started disappearing and drinking a lot and then by the time I was seven, she got married to my, uh, my stepfather, whose name was Tommy, who had come back from six years in the Pacific in the World War II. And he was a shell-shocked veteran, violent, and an alcoholic. And my mother had a number of miscarriages from beatings and then when I was about nine, a child was born prematurely that survived. And he then was pretty much, I helped raise him. So I put the first 10,000 10, hours of my first career was being a mother for a little boy who, until he was five years old, I was his primary nurturing. My my mother would come around now and then, but she was often drunk. My stepfather was often mean, and I had to defend them against it. And so when I was about 13 and a half, I picked up a piece of firewood and fractured my stepfather's skull and broke three of his ribs and put him in the hospital. And when he came home, taped up again a couple days later, I told him while he was sober that if he ever laid a hand on anyone in that house again, I was going to kill him. That I could have killed him. I had him on the floor and he was busted up. I could have hit him one more time and I didn't. And I told him I would and he had a pretty good taste of what might happen if he did. And, and a couple of months later, I acquired a couple of 12 gauge shotguns showed them to him, shot them off in the air in front of him and said, they're hidden out here in the orchard. 
and I can access them in a minute, and I'll kill you with them. So the family was having a hard time putting up with me because I was being a dictator at 13 and a half years of age. And my grandparents came and and uh, they also, the, the house payments were behind and they needed the money that I stole from the social security checks to buy the shotguns with to keep the house from being taken back. So I had this deal I negotiated that they, my brother who was younger than me by a year and a half would go with an aunt and uncle in Tennessee and, and my little brother would go live with his grandmother. He, would, he was four and a half then. And then I would go live with my sister in Texas and we would split the family up. My mother, I told her she could either stay with him or she could stay with us, but it wasn't going to be with him. So she decided to stay with him. And so the family split up. So I kept coming, I came back and visited my little brother and his grandmother raised him. And my mother eventually left my stepfather and eventually came to visit and stay with me in Texas some. But basically I spent, I was like, uh, I was a redneck lower class kid and I was mad as hell and nobody, I could have, I was very close to going to prison instead of anywhere else. <clears throat> and then my sister and brother-in-law helped take care of me. I went back and I eventually forgave my stepfather. I beat him up one more time. He was hitting his mother when I was there on a visit once and I beat the hell out of him again. And he basically, he basically then became very, very well behaved whenever I was around. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've learned about parenting because I loved my little brother. He had gotten rheumatic fever when he was about two and a half years old and his heart was damaged. And there wasn't anything I could do about that, but I could take care of him and love him. And he's still alive now. He's 68 years old now. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, I still, we're still friends. He still comes up here now and then. He's only about 50 miles away from me. And so then I lived with my sister and brother-in-law. And when I was 16, I was on my own. And basically, I've been on my own since I was 16. I worked my way through college. I decided when I was in junior in high school, I was going to be a psychotherapist. During library period, I sat down for an hour and decided what I was going to do. And I did that. That's what I did <laughs> with my life. I wanted to help people who were hurting, particularly kids. And I wanted to protect them from people who did the hurting. So I became kind of, I was in the civil rights movement. I had a really hard time in the nonviolent civil rights movement. And basically we were nonviolent, but I threatened violence a number of times in a very authentic way. And I sometimes went to demonstrations with four people on my back holding me back. <laughs> but, <laughs> the opposition didn't want to mess with me in case they lost control sometime. <laughs> so I was the demon. <laughs> and uh, basically, I told people exactly what I thought, including cops and judges and stuff like that. I got arrested a lot in the civil rights movement. Um, and I did get shot at, and I got bombed with a lead, white bomb, lead pipe bomb. It blew out the windows and everything, but it didn't hurt anything. Um, I got chased in cars and shot at and run off the road and various other things, but it never got me. They never, they never got me. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> and, uh, and so then I got married a number of times. The first marriage was like 10 years. And so basically I lived a life where I really really appreciated kindness and love and i was really loving i was also like kind of a mean guy 
I never beat up my wives like my stepfather had, although we shoved each other and did a lot of, like not exactly what you'd call approved uh, arguing, but we weren't <laughs> violent. Yeah. And uh, so basically, I, I love little kids. They're my favorite people in the world. They're like from about birth to about 12. <laughs> and I've got a 12 year old now, he's turning 13 at the end of the week. My youngest child is 12, and my oldest is 51. <sighs> Lots of experience in there. <laughs> yeah, so I had a lot of practice. Yeah, and my yeah. kids were very successful. They were very, my, they're, my daughter, who's a singer songwriter, is becoming famous. She's been, she's done an Australian tour. Her name is Carsey Blanton. Uh, and I uh, have another daughter who's at the University of California at Berkeley, who's a graduate school teacher. And like lots of credentials and degrees and stuff like that. And uh, I'm proud of them. They're wonderful and they're good with their kids and they're funny. Most thing, the most important thing is being funny. So, that's <laughs> a lot. so I always tickled them and I always taught them how to make jokes and I always was able to make them laugh. And that's a really, really central part to parenting as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So I did that. Now I'm almost 79 years old. In another two months, I'll be 79. And I've been around a long time here. It's like a number of people say too damn long. <laughs> but generally, what I learned was that there is this... Um, yearning that we all have for being able to be honest with each other and that the honesty of children is not something we have to teach them it's what we have to learn from them they're attempting to teach us what we forgot as we grew up and got became teenagers and then like went crazy which is what you have to do to be an adult if you make it to adulthood you are crazy <laughs> <laughs> That's one way you can tell. Oh, are you, you're, if you're over like 16 years old, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably attained it much earlier than that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I say to people all the time in therapy with me, I don't trust my own mind. Why in the hell should I trust yours? <laughs> <laughs> And so we need each other's honesty because we're both just full of shit. <laughs> and so basically, we need each other to clarify what's actually going on rather than just keep doing our stupid sales pitch for how great we are. You know? And one of the great boosts to my... Uh, book sales, audio books have quadrupled and regular books, but this is the 25th year since Radical Honesty came out, 25 years ago. And this last month was the biggest check for sales of Radical Honesty I've ever gotten because of Donald Trump. <laughs> because he's just such a great poster child for a goddamn liar. You know, and you can see what a miserable, low-life son of a bitch he really is. And everybody's looking for an alternative. <laughs> so in a way, I'm kind of grateful for him because he's the best bad example we've had ever <laughs> of how to be a human being. Yeah. It's like, look, just watch your TV every night. That's what not to do. <laughs> don't, don't do that shit. <laughs> or you'll be a stupid, miserable person like this jerk. Yeah. So he's really helping with radical honesty. Yeah. I've been thinking about writing him a letter because he says he's going to make all of us better off. He's making me better off because he's such a fine example of what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's my biography. Yeah, <laughs> pretty impressive. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. I so actually have, I have an autobiography called Some New Kind of Trailer Trash. 
And yeah. that's the name of my autobiography. And it's about me being trailer trash and how I'm a little different than most. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so 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 why the book why is honesty such a radical thing? I know that it's it's a, a value that I aim to um, pass on to my children and uh, uh, why, why is it such, why does it require a book and why is it radical? <laughs> it's radical because we all lie like hell all the time and that's how we were raised. We were taught to lie, you know. Yeah. Don't mention certain things. Be polite. Don't say what's really going on. If everybody says, are you okay? Sure, I'm okay, no matter if you're hurting or not. <laughs> basically politeness starts being the instruction we start programming kids you know keep your hands off of that and start training them into politeness and uh they're already pretty honest and i always just loved them for being honest and thought well that's even more endearing and the reason for honesty is that you can actually care about someone who's willing to be open and honest with you but you can't care about someone's just performing and trying to manipulate their image in your eyes. Like Donald Trump comes to mind again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's just a showboat thing. It's just show, showing off. And so honesty means that you're honest about what you, about very simple things. You're honest about what you notice. You tell the truth about what you see and what you hear. And you also tell the truth about what you think. And some people say, well, I don't agree with that. I think something different. You see, okay, tell me. And you listen because you're observing and your observing being is more reliable than your thinking mind. Because your mind's got so much crap that you learn from your parents and teachers and the radio and the TV and everything else. All the other kids, they taught you how to be crazy very systematically. <laughs> <laughs> so it's to help yourself go sane mm -hmm. so that's the main reason for radical honesty yeah the i second, love you say that i love your expression that you have to get dumber yeah yeah right radical honesty is not about getting smarter it's about getting dumber mm -hmm. we discovered actually back to about 10 years of running the 10 day workshop called the course in honesty. We discovered a chant that leads to enlightenment within three minutes. And I usually charge thousands of dollars for this, but I'll give it to you and your listeners for nothing. That's <laughs> awesome. And the chant is a chant that without fail will lead to enlightenment in two and a half minutes. And here's what it is. Duh, 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 duh. And if, if you slobber, you get there in two minutes. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden, you're here. You look, and yeah, there's somebody right there in front of you. Like, hey, say yes, and say hi. <laughs> Yeah, and the automatic <laughs> laughter and joy that comes with that is yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. We're all in that place like several times a day. We don't know what to do. We say, Duh, what should I do? <laughs> <laughs> so that noticing is more important than thinking, way more important than thinking. And reporting what you notice is what radical honesty is. You report what you notice in front of you, you report what you notice in your body and you report what you notice going through your mind. And that's all there is. I call it inside, outside, upside down. Mm -hmm. The upside down is the mind part. So basically you just say what you notice. Just like you didn't know any better. Like you're a kid who didn't, hadn't learned how to be only polite before you got to the first grade. Mm -hmm. You just say that like you say things like, you look fat. <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 
you're, uh, I think that's funny. Or you say basically whatever seems to be right. And kids that are raised right just get loved and hugged for doing that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I know so one I, of the, one of the most powerful moments I had with um, with my son when he was six and he came to me and I I'd stuffed up by sharing some information that. Um, was really important to him that he shared with me and then I went and shared elsewhere and he he was really really upset and he came to me and I cried and he cried and I apologized and said I'm still learning to be a parent um, uh, prior to that I thought I had to be in control it was my job to show them the way and all that but that was I will never forget that moment I bet he won't either yeah yeah <laughs> uh-huh how old is he now he's 19 uh-huh all right yeah good that's great yeah I think kids like when my kids became teenagers, basically I said, now and then I'll overrule you until you get to be about 16. And I want you to be raised. You're, you're grown up by then. I was on my own when I was 16. I know you can make it okay. So when you're 16, you can stay or go, do whatever it is, but you're going to be in charge of your life. And if you have some things now and then, at, you can ask me about it if you don't. And sometimes I'll overrule you. I'll say, no, you can't drive a bird. You can't do that. Most of the time, I won't. By the time you're 16, be very few things I'll say that you have to do that you want that you can't do. And yeah. the idea is that we both then are enrolled in them growing up. Yeah. yeah. And I like them. I like kids when they're 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, although they're crazy as loons. <laughs> <laughs> What, what advice would you have for the mums in our group who have teenagers? Learn how to love crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'd be it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, if you can laugh with them at the dilemmas, you know, I sometimes say to my kids, I'm not laughing with you. I'm laughing at you. <laughs> 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 and they say, oh, dead. <laughs> but, but that idea that, you know, I'm not a perfect parent. I don't know how to do it either. I've practiced some. What's really great, my best assist in raising other kids, my other kids, was that the elder kids, the ones who made it up to about eight or nine or ten, helped raise the little ones. They love little ones. If they get to be past six or so, they love the little ones. Before that, they get a little jealous sometimes yeah. but basically other kids my other kids helped raise the other kids and it works really good even if they gang up on me it was still fun i love when you speak about the fun and and the joy and the sense of humor and for me i lost that i, I was a joyous parent a joyous person and then I became a parent and suddenly I had to get, felt I had to get serious and responsible. Uh-huh. Yeah. Ain't it the truth? It's a big yeah. mistake. Isn't it? <laughs> it's a big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> you can be serious now and then, but if you stay that way all the time, it's like not that much fun to be around you. You can't hardly mm. blame them for wanting to get the hell out of there. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah. When yeah. you're honest about what you don't like, you have to get over being angry. And I teach my kids to be angry. I mean, ask them to tell me that they're mad at me or that they resent me for something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And listen, and I tell them I'm mad at you for what you said or did. And when we be mad for a little while, they would say, well, how are you doing? What do you notice in your body? Are you still as mad as you were? Well, no. Not as mad as I was. I'm not either. Even though I still think you're wrong. <laughs> I still think you're wrong too. But, but the idea is that you can get to some place where 
you got mad and you got over it, you got hurt and you got over it. It's this thing we call transformation. And what it means is that when you're really honest about being sad, sadness expressed and honestly told about becomes joy and anger becomes fun, ecstasy. It transforms to love. Anger becomes love. Yeah. Not just phony, faking it, acting like you love. You actually get mad at somebody and after a while you love them instead of feeling mad at them. Mm. It actually occurs because of both of you connecting through honesty, even if the honesty is about something you're mad about. It's a hard thing for everybody to get because it's not a logical kind of thing. It doesn't seem like it should happen that way, but it does. It happens that way. Couples mm -hmm. that make it and are able to do it pretty good tend to stay together because they don't, it's not that they never get mad at each other. So they get mad at each other. They get damn mad at each other. They don't kill each other or beat each other up. But they yell at each other and they cuss each other and they name each other, all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And then... They, now and then somebody's made some way to this remark and both of them start laughing. <laughs> yes. I thought it's true. Yeah. <laughs> and when, they, when you start laughing at what you were really pissed off about is not nearly as infuriating. <laughs> and you start even laughing about things your feelings were hurt about. Yeah. 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 No, 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 that's an, another mistake. I made in my marriage uh, is, you know, taking our disagreements behind closed doors and, and thinking that not showing the kids negative emotions or not that there's negative emotions um, was, yeah. was actually detrimental to them. Yeah, it is, but I always like for them to get to be about 11 or 12 before you do that full force. So you do kind of protect them a little bit from your anger toward each other till they till they have abstract cognitive ability. Uh -huh. They have the ability to get a framework of understanding. But when they're teenagers, you need to be able to every now and then have a meltdown. So the whole house like, <laughs> let's, I've sometimes said, let's everybody just cuss each other out. So we would. <laughs> and, and it's hard to do that without some of it being funny. Yeah, yeah, you too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <thank> you. <laughs> Your home uh, must be a fun place to be. I want to come visit. <laughs> all right. <laughs> they're, they're scattered all over the earth now. I've got one son in Denmark that works for the Lego company, and he's the director of, of uh, learning through play. It's called his job is director of learning through play. And uh, he, he's a funny guy, and he's also got two sons. And I've got uh, a, a, so my son who's 12 lives in Sweden, in uh, Copen, and I go, I'm going to Copenhagen and then to Denmark and then to Sweden in about a week. And I go over there two or three times a year, and he comes here once or twice. And his mother and I are friends and we yeah. still have a little conflict now and then but we work it out pretty good none of it works out perfectly but we do a pretty good rough and tumble job of getting over stuff still might like bitch about it a little bit in the background <laughs> but basically we get over stuff pretty good yeah and it doesn't mean denying it, it means doing into it and then affirming it and saying yeah. Mm. Yeah. we differ I don't think you I don't want you doing that you want to do that so you're going to do what you want to do and I'll get mad at you and get over it mm. and that is a that's a hard thing for human beings to get it's whether or not we survive as a species is dependent on it. I think unless we learn how to forgive we're, we're doomed mm. And uh, thank God for Donald Trump showing us what not to do. 
<laughs> so, uh, so part of our work is is that like the the res resolving of childhood, um, the the parents' own childhood wounds and trauma, and 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 going in and and doing that um, resolving or integration pro process or forgiveness process. Um, how important has that been? Do you think for you as a parent? Hmm. It's been really important. I think it's important that you hit the high spots there. You have lots of things. You're not going to ever completely clear yourself of your yeah. reaction. Yeah. But the main ones, you know, in order to be in an ongoing relationship, if you're a woman, you have to forgive your father. If you're in a relationship with a man and if you're a, a man, you have to forgive your mother. If you're in a relationship with a woman, a little bit more. And similar, the, the found there's been a lot of research you know, among psychotherapists. They've developed rating scales for seeing who's the best psychotherapist. And they ask people who've been in therapy for a year or more with people how good they were as a therapist. And their clients rated them. And so they had thousands of these ratings by clients. Then they gave the clients a test from uh, something called the masculinity femininity scale. So it means the masculine questions are, would you rather drive a truck or, <laughs> or, <laughs> or uh, slap a dog or, <laughs> or would you rather like make icing for a cake? It's like, so it's a whole bunch of questions. There's like 500 questions in this strong vocational interest blank. It was mostly developed to determine what vocations people would like. But then they came out with a masculinity femininity scale. And when they did all the research, they found out that the female therapists who were the most highly rated by their clients and considered to be the greatest therapists were all a little masculine identified. They were kind of butchy and they were a little tough and they cussed and they did things like that. And the, the masculine therapists, the male therapists, were feminine identified. They tended to be more interested in compassion and and they would cry. And they do things not that more they were easily they would more easily talk about emotion. So the male therapists were feminine identified and the female therapists were masculine identified that were the best of all the psychotherapists. And it makes sense if you think about it, you know. You have the capacity to empathize with members of the opposite sex and members of your same sex. That generalized capacity to empathize a broad, a broad range of identities makes for good therapists. And so basically, basically when you're going through a process of forgiving your mother, and allowing her to be as she was without you having to keep it secret or not talk about it. I recommend that people do, when we do the 10 day workshop, I ask them to go home. They tell the whole story of their life in the workshop and it's videotaped, they get an hour. And they tell the whole story of their life from as far as back as they can remember until modern times. Hmm. And then we ask them to take that back and show it to their mother and show it to their father show it to their brothers and sisters back home and have a conversation in the family to do what we call completion work. Some of the families like it and some of them don't. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a, a few. I had this one fellow called me up and said, well, my daughter went to your damn workshop and then she came home here for Thanksgiving. I well, we want you to know we don't like what you do. I said, okay, good. <laughs> About three months later, he called up and he says, well, we had Christmas together. It's the best Christmas we ever had, so we want to take it back. We do like what you do. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so we asked people to go back and tell their parents what they resent them for and what they appreciate them for in order to forgive them. Mm. So we asked them to go and tell their parents. They went to this weird workshop by this crazy psychologist. <laughs> practice something called radical honesty and that they're going to tell them the truth that they want to forgive them 
that they've been holding things against them. They want to let up on them. And they want to allow themselves to be with them without judging and hiding and lying to them. And will they go through it? And their parents agree. They always agree, generally. And then they end up doing some of it themselves because they get pretty hurt and angry about what their kids, particularly what they lied to them about. They withheld from all those years. But when they stole the car and got it all beat up, we fixed it and let them know. <laughs> and, uh, Basically, what happens is that these the completion work is that something that was incomplete because you were withholding it. Mm. You're protecting your image in the eyes of your parents all along to make them think certain things of you so you could manipulate and control how much they appreciate you. <laughs> and when you give it up, it's hard business. You'll end up crying. You'll end up getting mad. They'll end up crying, getting mad. But in the end, you get up saying, well, thank you for telling me. Because now I know who you are and I love you anyway. Mm. Which is an authentic kind of love rather than just a play kind of love. Okay. And so that's, we call it completion work. Mm. Fantastic. And I do recommend that you do go and tell the truth. And, and with couples, I recommend they tell each other their entire life story, and their entire sexual history, too. Every lover they've ever had, whether they've done it with males or females or animals or turkeys or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they, yep. basically, they basically tell each other their whole sexual history, and they both actually get re-enthused from that because it's kind of not only is some of it funny and charming and kind of pathetic, but some of it's kind of mixing. Yes, I did go to bed with that guy, but like we couldn't get it on, he couldn't get it up, and I got mad at him. I rolled over and we spent the night together, but we didn't really do anything. No kidding, I thought y'all were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> So what's happened, once all is known, there's not any more to be, you don't have to guard against being found out. Mm. Yeah. And so you can just be found out. You just voluntarily get found out. You give them your whole story of your life. And the thing is, people do have, human beings have empathy. Almost all of us do. True, true sociopaths are psychopaths or narcissists like Donald, he gets on my mind now. <laughs> <laughs> or, or they have kind of a cutoff between their own feelings and other people. But generally, almost all of us have a capacity for empathy, for caring. You can't look at a little baby and not want to just pick them up and hold them. Yeah. Unless they've been like crying for six hours and you <laughs> <laughs> but, but basically we have this empathy and we have it even for somebody that we're mad at after we got through being mad at mm -hmm. and you can actually feel sorry for somebody for something you used to hate them for and yeah. you can actually appreciate people for things you used to resent them for in your workshops when part of it is to recommend that people go back to their families and be honest is there difficulty for some people like in in being honesty in the beginning is it difficult to begin being honest generally it is it takes some courage you have to take it you're not used to being the one that broaches and the subject and says, I've been lying to you by withholding. First of all, we tell people to get used to it, to know that what that lying is a form of withholding called a form of lying called withholding is lying. Just not mentioning something. That's the most pernicious form of lying. You know something, you don't say anything about it. Yeah. And we so I say to people, I recommend that you hurt people's feelings and that you offend them and that you stick with them until they're over being hurt and over being offended. And you tell them you'll stick with them and you do stick with them. And 
until you get over it and they get over it. Well, once somebody is committed to do something like that, first the parents don't like it a damn bit. And then they get to where, well, this may not be such a bad idea. <laughs> because what they go through in the process is they get mad and get over it. They get hurt and get over it. They get really like happy and get over that a little bit. We want people to get over positive emotions too. We don't want you to be in love like, you know, a bad romantic comedy. So you don't want to be like mushy and, oh, I love you so much. It's like, that's just another goddamn insanity. But, <laughs> but we ask you to appreciate yeah. them for what you authentically appreciate them and you tell them and they appreciate you appreciate them. Yeah. And what happens is that forgiveness leads to closeness. You recognize that a lot of your judgment of them was your own defensiveness in the first place. You have to tell them that and you'll have to work it through before you can get that. And you feel a lot better about yourself when you get that. Mm. You get, I'm capable of forgiveness. That's a damn good thing to be proud of. Yeah. I think when people find out sometimes too, they don't know much about their parents' lives. You know, uh -huh. they, they don't know what their parents did growing up or what their parents' life was like. They've been living with them their entire life, but they don't know what their childhood was like. So yeah. it sounds amazing to hear what that was like. That can be quite transformative as well. Yeah, absolutely. And it often breaks out, you know, like when the kid has told the parent about their life, they say, well, what was your life like? And they end up telling their stories or most of them yeah. Yeah. or a lot of significant events. And there's a kind of a sharing on a deeper level than before. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And is that opening, you say, well, no wonder you're such a rotten mother. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because the way your daddy treated you, no wonder. Mm, yeah. And eventually, though, they it is, you get to laughter, just like I know you got, you laugh easily. Both of you are nod and smile and look very pleasant. It's like you've had a lot of pleasant experiences <laughs> and a lot of, you've done some forgiving yourselves, haven't you? Yeah. We've done lots of forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping judgment of others. <laughs> Good. And a bit yeah. of stand up comedy, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, the powerful thing I found uh, when I was nine, one of my friend's parents nicknamed me Miss Logic. And <laughs> It wasn't till my late forties that I dropped the the overthinking, the analyzing, the logic, and uh -huh. um, and then I started to find this creative being inside me. Yeah, that wasn't just being controlled by being super reasonable. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Good for you. <laughs> And another thing I found with lots of our mums of teenagers in particular, they, they will tell me stories about their teenage years and say, oh, but I could never tell my son that, never tell my daughter that. And your work is saying the opposite, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Go ahead and tell them and be, embarrass yourself by it. Say, the reason I'm watching you and I want you to go to bed with that guy is because I went to get my boyfriend when I was 14. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And yeah. That really was terrible. I didn't like it. It turned out wrong. Yeah. Because it's coming from such an authentic place then and kids always recognize authenticity. They, yeah. they, they love it. Yeah. They do. They also are put off by it sometimes because it's a process they have to go through because the kids are just as crazy as their parents are. Yeah, and they're learning too. They learn. But they do. They are available to it. They yeah. they might say, oh, oh don't tell me stuff like that. But they really do. 
<laughs> underneath appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Might be a few years later. <laughs> appreciate <Yeah. it. laughs> Right. You. Too much information, Ron. Too much information. <laughs> right. Right. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, I always like Mark Twain said a quote that I really like and I quote a lot. He said, I don't have any prejudice against anybody. I don't have a prejudice bone in my body. All I have to know is that the individual is a human being. It doesn't get any worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, true. Yeah. <laughs> very strange <laughs> species. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so when the, in your so you've got a nineteen year old. Is that your only child? You have. I uh, I have three. Uh -huh. uh, twenty twenty. Oh, I get the ages wrong. Somewhere around <laughs> twenty two, twenty and eighteen. Uh huh. Mine are 21, 19, and 16. All right. You guys yeah. are just at the end of the having to be on guard all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a terrible thing. You know, you still have to worry about it, but you don't have even as much control as you had before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are they doing? Do they, are they, you're all kids friends with each other? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's, it's wonderful. We we had some really rough years, and that's that's probably what brought me to this work and sharing with other parents, and me being con trying to be controlling over my children rather than letting them be who they are, and and that's the the judgment that I held was showing me who how how to go ahead and drop judgment of myself and uh, and love and appreciate myself and do it easy more easily for others. Yeah. It works the other way. The more other people you forgive, the more you let up on yourself. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Good. So are both of you still married to the parents, to the fathers of those kids? I, I am, yes. Yes, uh -huh. I resonated with some of the things you were saying about anger and uh -huh. going through that and then having, you know, um, ecstasy following anger. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, I've been through that process many times, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But yes, we are still together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. So, and your ex, is he still around in the world? Yeah, yeah, he is, um, and I call it a successful divorce as well. In fact, I've spoken to a number of divorce lawyers who don't like me at all because <laughs> we were able to do it ourselves in peace. Isn't that great? Yeah. yeah. You saved so much money too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. and, and we still come together uh, with our children, you know, so it's all it's pretty darn yeah. cool. Good for you. Good mm -hmm. going. Yeah. Okay. So, do you uh, actually work with other parents? Any? Or what do you what do, What do you do as your regular work? Yeah, we work. We have an online course for parents to go through, and um, ma mainly just to you know look at who they are, where they come from, and what they value in life. Looking at what's important to them, because that sometimes they just don't even think about these kinds of things. So. Uh -huh. T guiding them through that and then yeah I, I'm a faster EFT practitioner so I also help them going back and resolving um, the, you know past things that have happened in the past so yeah self self forgiveness I suppose yeah uh -huh. yeah. yeah so we, we we go we guide them through those processes as well uh-huh good yeah yeah great well, good luck with your work. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and it has been so awesome to talk with you. Thank you uh, for so giving good. us your time. You're and welcome. 
very much enjoyed talking to you and I really like the whole conversation. Yeah. I think we're all involved in the best conversation there is. We just have to yeah. hurry it up a little bit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so if our viewers would love to find more about you, how how do they go about finding you and your work? They can go to radicalhonesty.com and there are a whole bunch of workshops being offered all in mostly in Europe, about 10 countries in Europe and in the United States, all over the world. Every weekend there's some kind of radical honesty workshop and wow. usually two or three somewhere. And there are about 50 radical honesty trainers in the world that run live workshops and we're just starting an online workshop and uh, we do trainers trainings and basically I'm trying to give the company away to the people that are the teachers, mm. which is hard to do by the way, you have to get a lawyer. <laughs> and, uh, so basically, if you go to RadicalHonesty.com, there are videos and there are audio books and written books and and uh, lots of uh, short videos and there's a Facebook page or two and if you just type in Radical Honesty, you'll find it all over the world in different places. Yeah, we liked it. We liked your website. What did it say? Oh, yeah. drop drop the bullshit something like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And well, we're well, so well, much well, in line with honesty. Honesty is our thing as well. Like just being honest with yourself. Start there. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, the way that you know you're honest with yourself is when you're honest with someone else. That's the way yeah, you find. That's true. If yeah. you if you're just honest with yourself, you can be psychotic. You have to have a me and a myself. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so the idea is that you be honest with yourself by being honest with other people. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. And basically, I just I think it's you all know it's good work. You can it's fun work and you end up loving a lot of people and you end up helping a lot of people. Yeah. You feel a whole lot better about your regular on day going at daily everyday life. Yeah. I'm glad you're in it. I'm glad we're we're becoming a force in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Making change. Right. Well, I'll tell Donald Trump about you. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, if he listens, that'll be another thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, All right. Oh, All right. Thanks, thanks so much, Brad. Yeah. 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 Nice okay. to meet you again sometime. Let Bye. me know when this, when this is launched so I can tell everybody on my mailing list all over the world. And, I'd um, like to let them watch your uh, ongoing show yeah. on, online. So let me know when you're putting it out there and I'll send it around. Oh, fantastic. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Thanks All right. So much. Okay. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Bye.